We were supposed to, you know, get dinner a few times. Just my schedule didn't really work out with his. He's from, you know, my area. Not. <laughs> my... <laughs> All right, this is just. I'm not. All right. I'm not, you're, not, you're not going to reveal who it is. Apple employee, Chicago, bald, <laughs> divorced, late 40s. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Macrodosing. We have a special Macrodosing. It's going to be a shorter one. So it's probably going to be uh, like an hour and a half. I know that's weird to say that short, but Jerry, usually we go for like three and a half, four hours. Wow. On the show. Did not know that. Yeah, so that's Jerry. Jersey Jerry's going to be joining us today. Very special episode. We got Billy, we got Big T, Mad Dog's back, Mackenzie's here, and uh, Arian is not here. But he is, Arian did say that he's going to do a solo episode or an episode with Mad Dog. I think he might have volunteered you for an episode. Wait, I uh, can they I both context? did miss an episode this week. Wait, yeah. yeah, can I have context? Oh. Yeah, Arian just felt bad because he's missed a couple of shows recently. So he said uh, to make it up to the listeners, he wants to do an episode, maybe just him and you. If <laughs> big, chat. Maybe Big T's around, if, if McKenzie's around. Who knows? But um, they he, so so you want everyone to to do it except you. <laughs> Correct. And yeah. He didn't mention me. <laughs> yeah, he didn't mention yeah. Billy either. Yeah, I would. I will to do, do it though. If but I'm I, invited. I think he specifically said like him and you doing an episode. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know what topic he wants to do, but we'll uh, we'll look into that. Okay, I'll Bi do that, Arian. Billy's drinking piss right now. Yeah, by the way, if you're Billy's watching, drinking I'm the back most. on the piss, and Billy's back for big, now. Big jar of piss. Um, so Jerry's here because we're going to be talking about cyber warfare, and Jerry's got some uh, recent experience with cyber warfare. Yeah. And I think Jerry's a little bit nervous about how deep he's going to get with us today. I mean, I don't know how deep I want to get. Because you might know deep, too Jerry. much? Because I might know more than the average person. Well, that's that's good. That's educated. Well, not that I know like the details. I just know something is going to happen. Yeah. Have you, have you always been a guy that thinks that something's going to happen? No, never. This is just a new thing for yeah, you. Yeah, this all started on the airplane, taking a flight um, to Florida. Okay, we'll, we'll get into that in just a second before we get to all that. Just like housekeeping, clean up shit here. Um, I am eating soup in the studio, so if it smells bad, I apologize to everyone. This is the only chance that I have to eat today. I know that sometimes... Why is it that if it's your meal, your meals are kind of like your farts, where your farts smell good to you sometimes, yeah. but they gross everybody else out. Same thing if you're eating hot food in a, in a closed room. So I do I think apologize. soup is fine, though. You think so? As long as it ain't like fish. Yeah, no fish, no Dude. shrimp. I almost burnt down my apartment making soup. I can bring down the soup. Uh, but you know the apartment spell when you walk by other people's apartment? Yeah. I'm I'm that guy right now. Your apartment smells? Well, no, it's smoky. Um, do you think it has anything to do with your dog, your uh, hedgehog, and your bench press gym being right next to the door? No, it, it actually, uh, my apartment smells good besides the food smell. We actually keep a very cleanly ship over here uh, between the hedgehog, the dog, and I. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, everyone it's, pitches in. Wait, everyone is that your in. front door behind you? No. It's actually the door to the trash room. Oh, that looks Got like it. it. So is it maybe the trash? Is it? Which is more likely, the trash or the hedgehog that is smelling up your apartment? Yeah, wait, what no. is a trash room? Billy's it's like, I have a trash room in my apartment. I have a hedgehog and a dog and a gym, but that's not what's making it smell. It's the food. I will go bring down the soup right now. It just smells smoky, but like, you know how your apartment smoky smells, smells fine, but like everyone else's smells bad, like when they cook food? Yeah. Yeah, if you're not going to eat it. And everybody's apartment, everyone's house has a specific yeah. smell. It, it takes you a second to get used to your house, but then once you do, you don't smell it anymore. But I think everybody's grandparents have the same smell. I remember my grandpa the moth smell balls. of my grandparents' yeah, house too. very well. It smelled like shit. <laughs> well, it's all mothballs. Yeah, mothballs. They're usually older houses. That seventies carpet that's like thick and fuzzy. Yeah. Uh so if it does smell in here, I, I do I do apologize. Um before we get into the cyber warfare stuff, let's just do a real quick update on Billy's sheet that he sent over. Topics for today. Somebody's squatting in Gordon Ramsay's pub. 
Someone just took it over. I'm, where I, did all these squatters come from? I feel like I hadn't heard about squatters in 20 years, and the last six weeks, it's been nothing but squatters. They've been around. Have you heard of these people, Jerry? Yeah, I have. And I just don't understand how these people are entitled to do this. Well, you it's, notice it's in cities where the police yeah, yeah, don't yeah, do course, anything. Yeah. Uh, no, no, look, no, no. Big T, this, has been, this was happening in Texas when I was living there. It's, well, all the place I hear about it now is San Francisco and New York and here. That's what they're writing about in the news, but squatters have been a thing for, for a very long time. I'm sure time. they've existed. And it also it, has to do with the housing crisis. In Texas, it was more more about the fact that uh, they were like just using – it was the same people that would take a speeding ticket and then try to go to court like nine times to fight it to say like, oh, that flag that you have behind you, it doesn't have the yellow tassels on it in the courtroom – Therefore, this is not a real court court of law, and I don't have to pay my speeding ticket. They would also be the squatter people that would figure out how to litigate their way into just taking over people's houses. How are there. these like real laws, too? By the way, I don't know. You should just co- uh, eighty six that whole thing. No, no. Well, it has to do with with um, tenants' rights, which is a well, it thing. seems like the tenants have no rights. So basically, what the squatters do, especially in New York City um in new york in general is that there's great tenant rights so you need to be given a notarized or uh, officially delivered p- documents saying that you're evicted and you must leave and then you have 90 days i think or 30 days so basically these people show up they claim their tenants and then whenever when the police show up when the uh, the landlord calls to get them out they're like, oh no, we're tenants. They just have the lease. We don't have the lease. Only the landlord has the lease. So there was landlords back in the day that used to just kick people out willy nilly, be like, oh, I gave them the 30 days already. And then they'd be like, no, what? We just got here. Um, but people have taken advantage of the laws that are supposed to protect uh, tenants of landlords who are trying to be oppressive and trying to uh, basically kick them out of their homes that they pay for without due time to get out. But, you know, you're having examples of landlords getting arrested for changing the locks and violating tenant rights. Uh, And that's 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 where the the crux of the argument is, because you're having bad people take advantage of good laws to protect, you know, well-meaning tenants. Yeah, there's there's also always an uptick in squatters when there's a bunch of home foreclosures. So back in like 2007, 2009 there would be these massive homes, like million dollar homes sometimes that people, their their mortgage spiked up to like a massive rate. And then people would just move in to the empty houses and then put something on the door and they just claim ownership. I think it's called like adverse possession where they would just take over the house. And then you get tied up in the court system and a lot of people just feel like it's too much trouble than it's worth to get these people kicked out. But uh, I guess people are, they took over Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. Yeah. Okay, so oh. that's funny. You, there should be an exemption in that law where if it's funny, you should be allowed to stay there. Like, Billy, if me and you took over the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. That, we might have an argument there. Yeah, this it would just be too funny to kick us out. But What if so we what, claimed that it was our ancestral kingdom that we yeah. were reclaiming? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. But but what's going on with Gordon Ramsay? Um, basically... So the people who are squatting there is because they were, wait a second. Oh, it is. Oh, it's a protest. Okay. Palestinian protest. Protest for Palestine. Okay. Yep. Um, That happened in O'Hare yesterday too. Yeah, yeah. And the Golden Gate Bridge. They've been everywhere. See, what I don't understand about the, the, the protest is I'm all for protesting. But, I mean, when you're fucking with somebody's flights, I mean, there has to be a law. Yeah. Something that says, like, you know, you're endangering multiple people here. My general rule is uh, I'm all for protesting unless it it personally inconveniences me. Yeah. And then I get upset about it. But, like, it's always inconveniencing somebody. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, they had – it was like a a coordinated thing where it was the Golden Gate Bridge and O'Hare Airport. Yeah. And so, yeah, some people couldn't get to their flights. Some people have, like, real emergencies they have to get to. Yeah. But, but then there are people that are like, well, this is driving people away from their cause. The fact that you're inconveniencing people. I think most of those people probably wouldn't be on their side anyways that are no, saying yeah, that. No. Um, 
but yeah, I guess it's just like to raise awareness or something. But uh, I mean, they could raise awareness on this on the side on the on the side of the road, maybe side of the road. Yeah, yeah. So they're um, they're taking over this place and they're trying to turn it into an art cafe. Yeah, in England. Uh, I just want to see Gordon Ramsay like do the kitchen nightmares thing, where he goes into it and he 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 gets the squatters to work for him. I love there's people that you can hire to out squat squatters. And uh, that's pretty awesome. They're just literally the worst roommates ever. And they just squat with you. And they're like, no, I'm squatting. And they sleep there and they just play music all night and just drive the squatters out. And honestly, in a maybe a different time in my life, I, I'd love to be one of those people. You like to squat? No, no, no. Be a, an anti-squatter. So Indeed. you go in, you squat with the squatters, and on behalf of the landlord who pays you, you get them out by playing music all night and like partying until they just be like, "We can't live here." You'd be good at that. How do they? How do they do this without any paperwork? I think they they don't have to because some it, some of them do. Some of them are very good at like the court system, wow. and they fire like all the they file all these briefs and motions and shit. But yeah, it depends on what city you're in. Sometimes the the uh, like Billy said, the tenant laws are so easy that you can just get away with doing it. Billy, what you should do, you should show up and you should actually bring your weights and just literally squat in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Billy a squatter is, in my own apartment. I actually squatted yeah. in my apartment today. Yeah. Billy's completely in favor of squatters' rights. <laughs> Only if they squat over 315. Yeah, but that'd be awesome. What, what Gordon Ramsay should do is he should just show up and like turn it into a functional kitchen using the people that are squatting there. And then have it be like a fi- like a Michelin starred restaurant using people that thought that they were just going to take over his restaurant, his cafe. Do a reality show about it. Huh. Billy, what else you got on your list? We have um, Logan Paul's having a kid. Congratulations. Okay. With Nina Agdahl. Are you for? Are you for real? Yeah. Wait, when, which that dispels dog? a lot of rumors that uh, he was on so many steroids, he was infertile. So, mm, I wonder who started those kind of rumors. Not me. You Maybe just bodybuilding believe, forums. You just believed him. Uh, so, he's this is his first kid. Mm-hmm. Mad dog, you sound mad. I don't like him. He's from my hometown. He's a fraud. He's a fake. You know that, right? What's what's fake about him? I mean, he scammed thousands of people for money. Oh, was that the crypto stuff? Yeah. My buddy got banged with that. What was his crypto thing? I don't know. Something my buddy invested like $5,000 into, and it was all a scam. It just, the the value dumped? I don't even, I think, I don't even know what happened, but something happened where it either never came out or it dumped or something. But it was a scam. Can't believe Paul Coin didn't work out. Yeah, he was. He's also big in in Pokemon shit, right? Yeah, he. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, at least I know he was. Yeah. So Jerry, you're a, a collectible guy. Yeah. You ever dabbled in Pokemon stuff? Not Pokemon. No, too rich for my blood. It's too expensive. <laughs> yeah, very very expensive. Crypto. Well, I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk you... has a card worth, I think, uh, close to a million. Really? Yeah. Hey. I think he has. I think he has multiple of them too. The Charizards. Dude, yeah, that was wild when I drew a picture of a frog and then sold it. Yeah, that Billy was a sold wild it. time. Billy sold an NFT frog illustration. For how much? Looking, I don't know what the, t- the, when I sold it, I cashed out for two drawings I did for like $2,500. Wow. At the you time. Were, you remember it's that? Now, you know that meme where it's uh, that girl in front of the house that's burning down, the little girl, and she's like smiling? Mm-hmm. Have you seen that one? Yeah. She did another picture in front of that same street of her now, and she's like 20, 25 years old. And then she made that into an NFT and sold the side-by-side of the meme and then her now. And I think she got like $500,000 for it. Uh, so it's still going. I, I don't know when she did this. this yeah. My guess would be this was three years ago. I've never been more right about anything than NFTs. Remember when they would tell people have fun being poor? Yeah. As yeah. they bought $700,000 pictures of monkeys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy that that didn't work, huh? All, all my apes gone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, NFTs are going to come back at some point. I'm sure in some form or fashion someone will be like, this is the new, and idiots will 
buy into it. Oh, speaking of idiots, Billy, I know that you had a um, you had a back and forth with this guy. Who? You, the guy that's trying to live forever. Oh yes, dude. He I've invited him on macrodosing several times. We got to get him on. Brian Johnson is his name. Jerry, have you heard yes. of this guy? Mm -mm. So he is. He was one of the founders of Venmo back in like mm -hmm. 2007. And he sold it for hundreds of millions of dollars back in 2013, I think, to PayPal. So he's got a ton of money. And he's trying to figure out how he can live forever. So he's biohacking. And he's, like, looking at all his levels every single day. He's adjusting, you know, uh, what kind of injections he's taking. He's pumping all sorts of shit into his body. I think he made his son donate plasma to him. Holy he shit. was – he had a blood boy, he called him, that would give him blood. Yeah, he avoids the sun at all costs. So if he goes outside to the store, he he – packs an umbrella and he just walks to the store wearing an umbrella. Where does this guy live? Sun. My guess would be California. Yeah, San Francisco probably. And he's pale as hell and creepy. And the creepiest thing is if you look at his side by side of what he looked like before he did any of this. What's his name? And now Brian, Brian Johnson. Johnson. With a Y. And oh. he tracks the craziest metrics like penal health as in penile. As in his, what is that? What is that? Wow, mean? he looks like a ghost. Yeah. How many how many erections he has a night, indicating how young is his blood flow in a, a hormonal state. Basically, he wants to be he wants a sixteen year old is his prime time because that that means like he's having like ten a night. Wow, the side by side is crazy from twenty eighteen and twenty twenty three. Yeah, he looks worse, right? Horrible. Yeah, he looks bad. But he looks whole, like he's on his deathbed. His whole thing is he wants to live forever. He, wants he looks to like a vampire. The first human. And his – so the theory that he's working with is that in like 30 years, 40 years, uh, AI is going to be so advanced that he'll be able to like upload his consciousness to the cloud. <laughs> God. And then he's going to live for, he just wants to live. I think until that time comes around, but he, he claims that he can live to like 160. I got a dumb question. Yeah. I'm 80 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm rich as fuck. Billionaire. I get to go get a new heart. Am I going to live longer? No. Cause there's the other parts of your body too. Ah, the heart, gotcha. the heart will be good. The what heart, else would I need? Would I need a new brain? Yeah. You, at some point you need a new brain <laughs> and then that's it. I'm good. No, a heart and a brain. Probably sure you'd get like new, new lungs. cancer in some form of uh, somewhere, liver cancer or something. What if I get all new organs? Yeah, maybe everything is brand new. Yeah, has anyone did, did, did Jerry just old. crack the code? I might yeah. have just cracked the code. <laughs> it's like a car, like a vintage car that, yeah, okay, just, the AC's just, out, yeah. I'll get a new car. It's like Pimp My Ride. Body. Yeah, what they did in Pimp My Ride. <laughs> yeah, they bought these old cars back to life. We're gonna put a new fuel injector in this 1937. I'm Chrysler. surprised nobody has done this. <laughs> well, because there's always like the chance of rejection for a new organ, oh, not to bring okay. the mood Also, down. how many okay. would you need? Yeah, you would need like a new liver, a new 40? kidney. You know what's no, crazy? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot there's of a organs. lot of stuff. So yeah, you have intestines. You need intestines. I would assume at some yeah. point your skin is the but biggest organ. I think I think the intestines would last just about as long as anything else. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting? You know how they use a lot of animal organs uh, for replacements. I think heart valves is a big one. Yeah, yeah, they use pigs. Yeah. So when I got Alpha Gal, I was and I beat it. I actually re got the test and I'm at zero zero as if it never happened. My body would have rejected any organs from bovine, uh, hoofed mammals. <laughs> that, that's fascinating. Wow. So, but I, I, I gotta still make this documentary. What's I have a lot gap? of documentaries backed up. Jerry, don't get him going. All right, uh, all right, all right. that's he, fine. He that's allegedly fine. got bit by a tick, and the tick made him not able to process red meat. His face did swell up, and he got. There he was enough evidence. I, would, I had a rough couple months. He had hives for about six to eight months, where his he would just show okay. up, and his face would look like the moon. But uh, yeah, no, Jerry's onto something. Like, it, what if you just had Bezos can do this easily? Yeah, yeah, Bezos probably does. That's probably what you were talking about Zuckerberg's bunker yeah. and shit. They probably just have like little clones of themselves chained up it. in the basement. I wouldn't doubt it. Anytime they new new need a new set of lungs, they just they yeah. go to their, their well, weird dude. Bunker. That's what they might be doing with um uh, stem cells and fe fetuses harvested. Well, they, they definitely are growing organs. They've been like testing for cancer research on on certain organs, but I I, I think Jerry is really onto something. 
you get everything brand new. You just would need get it brand new. Get the heart, get the lungs. Mm -hmm. At some point, the stomach, the spleen. You might not really need a spleen. Um, kidneys. Wasn't that Prince Harry? Wasn't Prince Harry saying that he was just an organ donor for his brother to make sure he survives? Yeah, yeah. Liver, eyeballs. You don't need as much as you think. Probably you need a lot. Tissue. Not yeah, but I I just named them. Those are like nine things. I think you need nine things. Yeah, I mean, I can do without fingers. I can do without toes. I can <laughs> I can probably do without a dick as well. What about a brain, dude? What if you what if you need a brain transplant? Yeah, you get that done. Yeah, new yeah, brain. but you're not so even you, then. So you're, you're going you. for like fifteen surgeries at eighty. Yeah. No, but you do them one by one. Yeah, true. You could do that. Do can, make sure it's working can, right. Can, can dude, one metal doctor bones. do all those at the same time? No, that no. Yeah, same time. I think you're automatically gonna. Die. That's what I'm saying. So you're going for 15 yeah. surgeries. Started at like four. Started at like 50 years old. We'll start at 50. You're about to I say had... 40, but then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a little I, young. That's, yeah, I don't want to do that just yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I had this no, take you, you on running backs and quarterbacks that we should just replace their knees before they go into the NFL draft, so that they have like bionic knees and can't tear an ACL. I was saying that about pitchers, that you get preemptive Tommy John when you're like 12 years old. There are people who want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's insane. And it's not really working. No. But you can, yeah, I think, you, could, Jerry, you could actually outlive this Brian Johnson guy if you just got <laughs> all the transplants. Yeah. yeah. So this guy is, he his new company is called Colonel, and uh, he's uploading his brain waves to, uh, he says it's to test for things like uh, Alzheimer's mm -hmm. or dementia, things like that. It's like an early warning detection thing. I don't know how advanced his, his science is on it, but I'm, I can pretty much guarantee you what he's actually really working towards is to be able to upload all your thoughts and the way that your brain works onto the internet. And then a powerful AI will study all that. And then it will create your brain online huh. like if the ai is powerful enough and that's how you live forever well let's say in a perfect world this guy's on to something right mm -hmm. and he's right and he figures this thing out he's just gonna get shot somebody's gonna kill him he's gonna get hit by a car or something. yeah something i mean he's the, the government will just pull one and done or just someone who's jealous someone who's he's, like easily oh. you can't you can't come back from that bullet in your head you're done if you walk around telling everybody i'm gonna live forever somebody's gonna be like yeah like hell you are yeah I we'll feel like that. it it would eventually just be him. Living forever is a nightmare. All your friends die? Once he gets to be like 110, he'd just kill himself. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do when you're 400 years old? Would that be any fun? Like, you can't hang out no with way. anybody. Everyone's no, like, oh, the yeah. creepy old guys. Yeah, here. no. I've There's just no way this guy's going to live forever. He's just wasting I mean, his time. It's also like very, it, it's super self-centered to think that you can do that. Yeah. It's like. This guy thinks that he's so important that he's going to be the only person in the history of the yeah. world that should be able to live forever. Have you ever had a dream? Have you ever had a, not a dream, a dream or the feeling that you already lived before? What do you mean? That just happens to me a lot. What do you mean? Jerry like, or, already lived in. I already. I feel like I already had another life in like a different historical period. Yeah, yeah. Like a, I was a different person before. Who do you think you were? I don't know. They come and go. These like dreams sometimes. Like I already feel like I'm not saying I was like a doctor or a cop. I don't. I don't know the details, but I I've had a what do they call that? Out of body experience. No, deja vu. Deja vu. Uh huh. I've had deja vu before, where it's like, huh. I feel like I've done this before in my life, but I know I never have. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Jerry, you should look up the last person to die in World War One. Oh yeah. What happened? It, it, just just you, look it up. Jerry, you're you're gonna get freaked out by this. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to die. I, I get the exact same thing, Jerry, but it's more that I'm in dreams where crazy shit's happening and I know what's going to happen next. And right, it's look. like crazy scenarios. Look at this guy. Does that look like anybody you know? Looks like Hitler. Hitler. Oh, it looks, like, <laughs> it looks like Hitler. No? Who is it? Imagine Billy with a mustache. You don't see that? Yeah. That's I, Billy. The, the, hair, the hair, yeah, for sure. Mustache. I'm trying to put a mustache on Billy. Yeah. Oh, you, you don't remember one. when I had a mustache? No. no. Your mustache was not this strong. That doesn't look like Hitler to you, though? No. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. A little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, a little bit like Hitler. There's some Hitler qualities to this person. <laughs> like Argentinian Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> when he yeah, trying to lay escaped. low. Trying to make everybody think that he's not Hitler. Yeah. That's what this guy looks like right here. 
But yeah, this dude wants to live to be forever years old. Is and this guy still alive? Henry got no. He's the last person that got killed in World War One. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So when you, when you think that when you, was World War One? Uh, nineteen teens. Yeah. Oh, okay, he's long gone. He, this guy died in nineteen eighteen. Oh wow! Yeah, he was the last time. person to die. The, the way he died is hilarious because he died charging a German gun tower uh, right after the armistice was called, but he was doing it because he had been demoted in rank and was trying to like like buzzer beater get a uh, <laughs> buzzer beater get a promotion before the end of the war. That's so dumb. I think and that's they were, also... the Germans were like, stop, the war's over. And then, they, then they're like, shit, like he's still charging and he's shooting at us. And they shot him and he was the last death of World War One. You ever think about that? Like when they signed the treaty, it probably took them days to get the word out. No, it took them. They, they, they got the word out and got the end date right. And everyone, did you see the, the All Quiet on the Western Front? Yeah. Great movie. I hated the movie because they just spoiled the whole point of the book and the title. Is that the, the war whole, ends? No, that the way he died was way too. The whole point of the book was he goes through all this shit and then, like, literally 10 minutes before. Well, spoiler alert for a book that was written years ago and a movie that has a different ending. But the whole point was that he gets shot by a sniper 10 minutes before the armistice and it's so pointless. And all is quiet on the Western Front. Like, he, he's not supposed to go out in some crazy battle, one-on-one, -on -one, hand hand-to-hand combat. It's supposed to be super pointless, his death at the end, to show how pointless the whole, you know, uh, sibling rivalry, cousins fighting cousins as kings, like, how stupid the whole thing was. Well, the way that, that the movie ended was the guy, he, he broke into a farmhouse to steal, like, a chicken or, like, eggs. And then a kid shot him in the woods. So it did, it did get that point across. No, no, that's how the other guy died. Yeah, but I mean that was the end of the that was the end of the movie. I don't think that happened in the book. The main character that they're I know following. I'm just, yeah. I'm saying okay. like it they did, may have made up for it. It got the point across. But yeah, this this poor bastard doing a buzzer beater. I I'll show you, I'll show everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna get a promotion. Uh anything else on the list we want to talk about, Billy? Uh, oh, the FBI is launching a little bit of uh, having to do with our topic today. The FBI launches a criminal investigation to the Baltimore bridge collapse. So mm -hmm. some crazy shit might come out. Where do you stand on the bridge collapse, Jerry? Uh, well, I did see there was another ship that did lose power. Did you see that, Billy? That's a little weird to have multiple. Like, I didn't really think anything big into it, but. Now you have another ship close to another bridge that happens. I mean, it's a little weird. Yeah. When when the first bridge thing happened, what was your initial reaction? Initially, I was like, okay, this just doesn't ever happen. This was to take away from the P. Diddy. <laughs> from, the, from Diddy. <laughs> and then I realized, okay, maybe I'm getting a little too crazy. Maybe something really did happen, you know, and I had to reel myself back in. Okay, you know. Yeah. By you, the way, I, you know, speaking of the P. Diddy, there's a whole movement on Twitter right now. I don't know if this is just my Twitter, but they're trying to say Tupac was gay. And they're like, I don't know if it's deep fake AI of him being a ballerina. Is that real? I know that he went to like a performing arts school. So he might have done ballet at some point. He might have been a dancer. I don't know. But the AI, the, the deep fakes scare me. They're yeah. getting really good. Like I can get, I have, I have Hank. And Dave in my phone right now. I can get him to say whatever. Really? Yeah. What do you want to hear Hank say? Uh, I don't know. Anything. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll program something a little bit here. Um, but yeah, the deep fakes are, they're going to be so good. How much do you pay good. for that service? Uh, nine ninety nine a month. That's not bad at all. It's not bad. To, just to just basically to fuck with Hank. Yeah. Have you seen that one video that people are overlaying that? It's of Travis Scott, I think, like coming out on stage during a music festival. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. can overlay yeah. like any person yeah, onto yeah. it. Yeah, I've seen that. So imagine in 10, 15 years. Like, because that still looks a little yeah. stupid. Yeah. But I mean, like if, if you can do that now yeah. in 15 years... There's going to be stuff that's yeah, indistinguishable the from the only real thing life. that's wrong with that is the quality, but the movements are yeah. all real. Yeah, our elections are fucked. Like people, some would, some some would say they that already. That's are. been the case for a while, especially in New York's third district. I would agree with Look that. Look into the primary process. Yeah. So, Billy, do you want to do you want to give a quick update? And I mean, really quick update. Really quick update. Uh, 
the press conference, I think, went decently. Uh, I I have a question. Yeah. Um, and I would really appreciate you telling me the truth, the whole truth, and yep. nothing but the truth. Yep. Was there press at no. your press conference? No. Okay. Thank you for telling me. No. There was a conference. <laughs> so when you asked for questions, you did that to an audience of no one. I. I. There was supposed to be press. They had agreed, like News Twelve, News News Nation, but then they just didn't show. They may have been intimidated by the establishment. And That's what happened. No, no, seriously. So no, I they showed got up. to News Twelve. I, be I believe it. No, like I was, I was out there, uh, and then there was a crowd of people there. Um, who approximately how many? Uh, five. How many had you never met before? Two. In person. Had oh, so you knew all five? No, one I truly didn't know and showed up out of nowhere. Uh, one was Jim Toes, who wouldn't sign on. Stand-up guy. He wouldn't sign on to the statement at the time, but he showed to show support for the cause. Um, and then uh, three were campaign employees, technically. So they were paid to be there. Uh, so yes. one and a half people showed up. Look, we, it was a little, it's a, there was people there. So it started late, admittedly. It started fault, 15 minutes late. Whose fault is it that your press conference started late? Um, honestly, I, if I had gotten off macrodosing 15 minutes earlier. Oh, it's our fault. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. I was wondering about that. No, no, no. Um, but it was a little late, but honestly, I think that it got the point across, uh, you know, basically, you know, we, we, like if you're looking for the speech, go to my Instagram or Twitter. Uh, shout out Nick, uh, shout out Nick Quinn. Uh, he's a campaign employee who's been cutting up some stuff, and he did a great job cutting up the speech. Um, but yeah, we just got out there with a podium, and we put the podium down, and then we were told to go around the corner. We were there. Uh, we still got the sign in. Made a speech in front of the establishment, and. Uh, I asked for questions uh, to the crowd there. There were no questions and, uh, you know, walked off. So this uh, this Mike LaPietri guy, I yeah. noticed that people are giving him a hard time today. I'd like to ask people to stop tweeting at the Mike LaPietri on Twitter. L-I-P-E-T-R-I. -E right, Billy? Yes. Yeah, so definitely don't. Please stop tweeting at him. I would appreciate that. Uh, that's exactly what we did not want you to do. So if I see anybody that does it, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to favorite the tweet so I can then bring it back up and remind those people to stop doing it. Okay. So thank um, you. Yeah, no problem, no problem. But I saw some people calling him Mike LaPP. Don't do that. Don't do that. I saw people call him Medlin Mike. Don't do that either. I saw people saying that he was French, that he wasn't actually Italian. Stop Stop spreading those nasty rumors. Um, but I do have a comment here from Hank Lockwood. I just, he sent me this video a second ago. Hey, Hank here. I will never be able to dunk a basketball because my legs are too skinny. Also, one time Billy and I kissed in the old office. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy, isn't it? You think that's real? Yeah. How do you get their voice? I think that's real. No, but Hank said that. Yeah, Hank How said did that. you know oh, about I'm like, that? It's, it's him. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, hey, I got Hank in my pocket. <laughs> Careful, Jerry. Don't fuck yeah, with me. No. I'll make one of you. How do you... Well, what do you do? I just type in the words and then... No, no, I'm saying, how do they know my voice, though? He's got he's got guys. There's... Yeah, I got shooters I'll out just there. send you a bunch of videos of me talking and it just programs it. I got I bad news. There's more than enough tape of all of us on oh, this yeah. podcast for them to make AI anybody. Wow. Yeah. So pretty Shit. scary stuff. Yeah. All right, so Billy, congratulations on delivering a conference, and uh, I hope that things go well for you. Also, if anybody out there is an experienced elections attorney uh, and has any pro bono time, please contact Billy Football to see if you can make sure that he can stay on the ballot. I'm yeah. I'm saying that Billy did not. Truth be told, Billy did not ask me to say that. I'm just thank you. I'm just putting it out there. We're we're just trying to figure out whether how much uh, resources we need to fight the. Uh, fight for the signatures in court 
um, because that's how they're trying to keep people off ballots. Not that the signatures are actually bad. It's just like, does anyone have enough money to fight us in court and fight the government in court? Yeah, Billy, so, how much money do you need for this? Or like, So I put in a lot of my own money. You can check my FEC filing, which was due yesterday. Put it in for Q1. Uh, shout out to Stoolies. We raised, I think, I think now it's around 17K. It was around 10K and the rest I sort of sourced from friends and family, but then 20K of my own money straight from the Jose Canseco fund, uh, being that I, my prize fight money. And that's what we started with. And that's what we got on the, ba- got on the ballot with originally. So now I we're trying to figure out, do we do a whole new fundraising campaign to try to get enough money to fight this in court and really extend this? Do I get up, go on the independent, uh, go be an independent on the ballot and take this to November? Uh, so hopefully we'll, you know, or, you know, do we, and I'm not thinking of the Q word. I was in McSorley's in uh, downtown New York, McSorley's bar, one of the oldest bars in New York uh, city. And I was looking at all the statesmen who had visited McSorley's on the wall. And I was like drinking some lights and some darks and looking at Teddy Roosevelt, JFK, Reagan, and be like, the, would these men quit? Would they have quit just because they had insurmountable odds? And I was like, no, Teddy Roosevelt charged up San Juan Hill. No, I'm, 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 you know, we're, we're, we're vibing in here and uh, get, got some inspiration. So we're not thinking about quitting. No. We're thinking about winning. Billy wants to end up like JFK. Let I Billy might be like Honestly, JFK. I might at this point, but he, he meant he, he had a good heart. He took out his head, not his heart. He could never kill his heart. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Uh, all right. We're going to get to cyber attacks and cyber warfare. And it's brought to you by Steven Singer Jewelers. I have a hard time saying that word. Can you say jewel, jewelers? Jeweler. Jeweler. One who jewels. Jeweler. Steven Singer Jewelers. Like you. I No, I don't jewel. I don't jewel. You sure? I'm jewelist Joe Jackson. Yeah. You you do an off-brand? I'm off the pipe. Since when? Jerry, Yesterday? Jerry, Jerry is to blame for getting me back on. No, I'm not. For getting hooked. <laughs> Jerry, I'm sitting next to Jerry every football Sunday and just staring at those clouds. I always ask him, Jerry, Jerry, can I get a hit? And Jerry's always like, no, no, you can't. And then one day I was like, no, seriously, just let me get one. Uh, But this is my last one that I'm ever buying. I love that. This is the last one right here. That you're ever buying. Ever, ever buying. That's kind of a. You you know the the code words. (laughs) (laughs) I tried to slip that one by. Uh, But this show is brought to you by (laughs) Steven Singer Jewelers. You better listen up. You're going to thank me. I have the world's best gift. I mean it. It's uh, Mother's Day coming up. Don't wait. You always end up waiting till the last second. You get your mom a gift at the last minute. It's stressful. Don't wait around for that. Get your mom something ahead of time. And I've got the perfect gift here because everyone knows that flowers, especially roses, are the number one gift that mom wants on Mother's Day. But here's the thing. A week later, they're in the trash. They're in the garbage. They're gone. Nothing left but a memory, a credit card bill. But you want to give a great gift that she's going to cherish forever. So here it is. Picture it. A real long-stemmed American Beauty Rose, deeply dipped in pure 24-karat gold. It's guaranteed to last forever. If you want to see what I'm talking about, go right now to IHateStevenSinger.com. Click on the roses to see his in- entire collection of exclusive colors perfect for mom. I love the uh, the I Love You Blush Pink. They also have the brand new red one. That's what I've got in front of me right now. It's really nice, right? That's a deep red. This is a, a gift that mom's going to love. Send it to her right now. Go to I Hate Steven Singer. Dot com and click on the roses and the collection starts at just 59 bucks only available at i hate steven singer.com free shipping free personalized love note and free lifetime guarantee that's a free lifetime guarantee steven singer is the most hated jeweler in america by other jewelers that's i hate steven singer.com check them out all right cyber warfare let's let's get into it let's let's talk about hacking let's talk about what might be going on these days Jerry has been, it, it all started with the eclipse with Jerry. Mm-hmm. Once you found out the eclipse was coming, yeah. the wheels started turning and you met a, uh, a highly sourced individual on a plane. Yeah. What, how long ago was this? So this was Super Bowl. We were going to Vegas and I never flew first class before. So I decided, fuck it, we're going to Vegas. I'm going to upgrade myself to first class, which I did. It was like 300 bucks. I could afford it. Went to first class. So because because I seen I want to say that because people are commenting like, oh, who's in twenty seven C with you? You know, yeah. I mean, this guy was fine first class. Okay, with me. 
and we we talked. This this had nothing to do with solar eclipse or anything. Are what, you are you talking guy on a plane? I let them decide if they want to be. If they are, then I'm all in. Yeah. Then I want to talk the whole flight, which we did, which was great. So this is a guy. Uh, I'm not going to say his name. He did say I can reveal where he works, though. Okay. So I will do that. So this is a guy on the plane, super nice, um, didn't know who I was or anything like that. We got to talking about what he does for work, what I do for work. He's like, oh, I never heard of this company. You know, it seems cool or whatever. And then he bought up Malaysia. He's like, have you watched anything good recently? And I'm like, oh, no, not really. He's like, dude, you should really watch this Malaysia documentary, The Missing Airplane. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll give it a try. On a plane? He wanted you to watch that on a, yeah. while you're riding Wh- on a plane? Which I knew what Malaysia, you know, the, the missing airplane or whatever. I was like, oh, okay, I'll give it a watch. By the way, excellent watch. Mm-hmm. Really fucking good. Is that the Netflix one? Yes. Yeah. Very good. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Anyway, that happens. Great guy. He was going to the Fountain Blue for a conference for his company. Now, I will reveal where he works. Apple. Okay. <laughs> he told me you were saying like one of the biggest software companies in the world. Yeah. But you wouldn't say where it was. Yeah. But now you can reveal. Yeah, Apple. Apple, that's one of the big ones. Yeah. So he works at Apple. Okay. So I will say that. I won't, I won't he said do not ever mention my name. And I I promised him I would never. Okay. So that happens. We remain we exchange phone numbers. Um Divorced guy in his, in his 40s, 50s, around there. Um, couple kids. And uh, w- wife pretty much left because over, he's working all the time and stuff like that. Not a nasty divorce by any means. Super cordial. You're giving away a lot of information about this guy <laughs> <laughs> whose name you're not supposed to reveal. I think it'd be really hard to find him. Okay. I mean, I, I think, What color was his hair? Uh, no hair. Okay, so bald... <laughs> Tall guy, <laughs> late 40s, I'm done. divorced, I'm done. I'm done. Apple. I'm Got done. it. I'm done. I'll Steve find it Jobs. by the end of the show. Yeah. Oh, was, this, was this Steve Jobs? No, it wasn't. He's a chubbier guy. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. All right. All right. We won't ask you anymore. Mm. I'm done. Last four of us. So, nothing. I don't know that. So, anyway, <laughs> we remained in contact. Yeah. We were supposed to, you know, get dinner a few times. Just my schedule didn't really work out with his. He's from, you know, my area. Not my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is just. I'm not. All right, I'm not, you're, not, you're not going to reveal who it he's is. Apple employee, Chicago, bald, divorced, late forties. No, he's from Jersey. Jer- he's from Jersey. No, he's not from Jersey. <laughs> not, <laughs> not from Jersey. No, he's from New York City. No. Oh, you said Chicago. Yeah. 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 Okay, got it. So anyway, we remained in contact. Super nice. Very very religious. Mm-hmm. Super religious to the point where it's like, uh, you know, like, <laughs> just say his name at this point. I think it's going to be really hard to find this guy. Yeah, yeah. We'll find out. No, no, we won't find him. We won't find him. <laughs> Should I say anything else? <laughs> no, right? no, no. Say whatever no, you I'm want. I'm trying to explain yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, does yeah, yeah, yes. what does he work in? How does he I know can't, things? I'm, I'm not going to. I'm like, I don't want He works at Apple. <laughs> okay. That's all. He is... Probably, I'd say, top 25 to 50 guys at Apple. Okay. I would say. Just based on my, me doing, like, research on them and stuff like that. And, like, the level of information he was able to, to give you. Yeah, but, like, he never has ever given me. So, this is where I'll... He's I, in first class, so he's yeah, a heavy hitter. Yeah, and I'm, like, people are like, oh, why isn't he on a private jet? I don't know. Maybe people don't like to waste their money flying private. Who knows? Plus, it's for his company. I'm sure they paid for his flight. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, we remain in contact, texting back and forth, I don't know, once or twice a week, three times, whatever, trying to organize dinner or whatever. All good. Then out of the blue, one day he just messages me what he said. Now I can bring it up real quick, dude. Uh, let me look at it here. Hold on a second. Mm. I found this, this guy on LinkedIn already. No, you didn't. This was... No, you didn't. <laughs> Did he really? No. No, no, no. no. I, I don't think you can. It was during the Final Four that you started to get... It was like during those games. Yeah, yeah. So and that's when he hit you up? So, yeah. So that's when he pretty much said like, you know, hey, pretty much hope all is well. Um, blessings to you and the fam and whatnot. And uh, just be careful. Watch out your credit cards. Watch out, you know, your passports. Something is going to happen that's very big. I've just been informed. I've just got an email. So I didn't reveal the other text messages, but basically I'm like, hey, can you like 
tell me exactly like, hey, what's going on? What's this about? He's because like, I, if if I were you, I would almost prefer that he didn't send me that first text. Exactly. Unless he gives you some information. E- exactly. So I'll, I'll tie the story more back in. Then he sends me a message where it's like, hey, I know a lot, but I don't at the same time, if you know what I mean. Now, when I read that, it pretty much says that he knows everything. He's just not allowed to tell. We've talked more after that, and he's like, I'd much rather do this in person. So we're going to figure out a date and get some dinner and hopefully I'll have more information. Okay. So the the upshot of what he sent to you was that there's something cyber wise going on. I think Correct. that was your term. Yes. Cyber wise. Yes. Yes. Cyber. So something to do with cyber, something to do with the power grid. Um, he oh, was sending me dude. a bunch of, he was sending me a bunch of articles that have already came out like, Hey, our stuff hasn't been updated in this amount of time, and you know it's the power grid. Yes, yeah. it's so easy to take control over, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and there was actually there was a hack that was I think Apple sent out a bunch of notices to people, right? I think so. Saying yeah. like, hey, people are trying to yeah. hack into people's phones, depending on what industry they work in. Mm-hmm. So I think like a lot of finance people. Yeah, I mean, Dave just got hacked. Yeah, I think that's public knowledge, right? I think so. I yeah. think he talked about that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, how do you think he got hacked? He got hacked through PayPal, he said. Okay. But yeah, so yeah. when when Dave got hacked, Jerry was like, see? Yeah, what? I mean, a, a lot of stuff has just happened. Uh, did anybody see the the weather thing happen for like an hour yeah. or two? The blip in South the South Atlantic Ocean? I didn't see that. But, no, Jerry's just talking. He, he pulled me aside the other day. He's like, you see that the weather app went down for a couple hours yeah. today? Bro, did you see AT and T that one day went down? Do you remember that? Yeah, I have Dude. I have Verizon, so I was I mean, good. Yeah, I was good too. I had Verizon. Have you guys seen Leave the World Behind? Because Jerry's kind of in the plot of the beginning of Leave the World Behind. There was a guy that was on a plane with somebody. Well, there was a guy who met a guy who said, "Hey, heads up, some shit might go down," and shit went down. The thing is, the United States' enemies cannot get into a hot war with us. We are unbeatable, no matter what Francis Ellis says. We literally have like the best weapons, the best military in human history, uh, the best technology, the best advancements. The only way they can get us is by attacking us in like soft proxy wars, be it online, try to disable and weaken our infrastructure from within by basically doing petty, petty attacks. Like, you know, so... I, I, it's one of the greatest threats to our nation through our infrastructure. Uh, like, so for example, something like collapsing a bridge by turning off uh, a boat's power in the middle of the night isn't that far out for enemies trying to get retaliation for, you know, some sort of perceived slight on their country. Hypothetically, if there was a false flag, uh, attack on Russia that Russia is trying to pin on the U S and Ukraine, they might respond by throwing a boat at one of our bridges to knock it down. I feel like, like there'd this, be so much easier stuff to do than, than timing it. So that when a boat is yeah. in the middle of the river, the current would take it perfectly into this one little pillar. Yeah. Like how bad would you think it would get and how quick if like we weren't able to use any cards or anything, any cards bad. at all. That's the next thing that's coming. Yeah. It, uh, you can't, you can't bomb America. No. But you can fucking shut down That's the, what I'm an saying. EMP. You can make our lives really annoying. Yes. EMPs, not, by no, the way, not everyone even... talks about EMPs. EMPs, like, just because everything turns off for a second does not mean everything is, like, not going to be able to turn back on forever. That's what people keep saying about EMPs. I'm, Nobody I'm said forever. But if there's a big enough EMP, it could, it could affect power for... Like more than a second, right? Yeah. Right. But let's say there's a solar say, flare, Let's say right? day. I think people would go crazy for days. No, yeah, you like think a solar you're... flare. Let... I think it would be nice to, we've talked about this on the show, but to just not have internet for a day. A day would be fine. Be I, good, I'm right? down with, I'm down with a day. We just hang out. Yeah. You know, I'm down with a day, but think about what it, it affects everything. Yeah. All your, all your bank shit. Resources, everything, any, anything it affects, you know? Yeah. So the plot, I'm looking up the plot of Leave the World Behind because, Jerry, I'm I'm just a little concerned that maybe this guy was trying to do the plot of Leave the World Behind to you. Okay. And, like, tell you that this was happening. But what, what, what is he benefit? See, I don't understand is what, is what is he benefiting from this? 
No, I'm not. I'm, I he don't know. He doesn't know I'm just, me. I'm just double you checking know. and making sure that yeah. he's not doing the plot. Uh, so the the person runs into somebody while they're shopping for groceries, mm-hmm. and then uh, all the TV and the Wi-Fi stops working. And then the next day, there was a blackout. Everything's still down. Okay, I don't think he was. So doing, not the plot at all. I don't think he was doing the plot too. Okay, good. no, the plot. The plot is is that like this super well connected uh, guy called me and told me that something's happening soon, and then that's what happened soon. So Jerry, I need you to be on the lookout for um, for like your Wi Fi turning off mm-hmm. and your TV going oh, down. Oh, that's that has happened. My Wi Fi has been going off. See, okay. you got you got Zentro. What's that? Uh, the shittiest Wi-Fi company in the country. No, I got Xfinity. <laughs> All right, I got some, and I got an Eero system as well. Have you seen? Have you seen a bunch of deer? No, you haven't seen any deer. Mm-mm. All right, that's the thing you got to be on the lookout for because in this movie, animals and stuff. Yeah, she she notices a large herd of deer that are standing motionless in the backyard. Yeah, no, I All haven't right. seen that. If you see deer start fucking around, <laughs> that's I don't know if there's deer you know by me, gonna, is there? The deer, look, yeah. the deerborne illnesses might be another attack on the United States infrastructure through Lyme's disease. Okay. Like, that is something, like, we don't know. We I don't. Mean, with, with a deer overpopulation, if you infect a couple deer with uh, Lyme's disease and, and, like, it affects people terribly and it's one of the worst diseases of all time, then it, sometimes there's some tick-borne diseases that make you lose uh, your ability to eat red meat. Like, we can't count these things out. Jerry, was there was there any time frame that the guy gave you? Uh, no, not a time frame. He didn't mention any like, hey, this is gonna happen soon. This is gonna happen late. Pretty much, something is going to happen. Okay, and you've and been... my my thing is, it's probably gonna happen closer to the election. Yeah, you've been in touch with him though, and you're you're gonna oh still yeah. dinner yeah hundred percent. Has he has he given you any more breadcrumbs or tidbits? No, just like blessings to the family. Hope everything is well. You know. Sent me a couple pictures, him and his kids on Easter and stuff like that. Oh, y'all really became friends quick. Yeah, we're tight. Yeah, we're tight. Have you have you seen him since that plane ride? No, or just text? No, just text. No, okay. no FaceTime, just text. See a sports fan? Yeah, huge. Loves the Cubs. Okay, <laughs> loves the Cubs. <laughs> Got it. Uh, we talked about the power grid at the start of April 2024. The North American Electric. Reliability Corporation said the amount of combined virtual and physical weak spots in the U.S. power grid are points that are susceptible to cyber criminals grew to a range of 23,000 to 24,000 in 2023. And it's all been growing like since uh, in in the last few years, it Uh increases by like a thousand more vulnerabilities. The organization said the uptick is increasing at a rate of 60 per day, 60 new vulnerabilities. The NERC indicated that geopolitical conflict, including the wars in Ukraine and Gaza, have contributed to the increase in threats to the power grid. Threats also commonly come from China, and the fact that there's an impending presidential election in the U.S. this year likely means a heightened probability of attempted attacks. It's not just the U.S. power grid that has vulnerable or vulnerabilities, with thousands of attacks inflicted since the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The crooks are becoming better by the day, so we need to become better by the day. Leonard Birnbaum, the chief executive of EON, said in an interview, I'm worried now. I will be even more worried in the future. A recent report from the International Energy Agency found the average number of cyber attacks against utilities each week more than doubled worldwide between 2020 and 2022. Bro, you want to hear the craziest thing that happened? Um, a bunch of armed individuals attacked a power plant in California. When was that? Which isn't cyber warfare, um, but it's just Russia. uh, Let me let me find this. And they still haven't been able to. Yeah. Authorities fear extremists are targeting U.S. power grid. Uh, So it's a low sophisticated, but low tech power grid attack baffles. This was back in 2014 baffles authorities. They came after midnight, two or more armed individuals so deaf that they cut telecommunication cables in an underground vault and outsmarted security cameras and motion sensors at the power substation in a remote corner of Santa Clara County. At daylight, FBI agents began pouring over time-lapse photographs from the surveillance cameras, but the photos revealed only staccato muzzle flashes. So basically, these guys just shot up a substation, 
um, to knock out 17 giant transformers that fed power to Silicon Valley. Um, we don't know what they were doing, why they were doing it, but they're probably trying to kill that Brian Johnson guy <laughs> by knocking yeah. out the internet. <laughs> It was attempted murder. It was actually right during the <laughs> do you bombing. Think, the do you think if, bombing. if he did like upload his consciousness to the cloud or to AI and somebody just came in and just bashed that computer with a baseball bat, would that be attempted murder? Yeah, if 100%. He, 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 yeah. He, would, he would definitely claim that. Yeah. He'd be like, no, that's my life. That, that guy just knocked out. I heard it's as easy as the power grid, like turning on a light. That's how easy it would be for them to do this. Just yeah. hit. Because do, do we own own it? The power grid? Yeah. I think the the electrical companies and probably cities and municipalities and shit. Who probably, built it? Uh, probably the companies in conjunction with the government. Some of it, some of it is like it's government subsidized. run. Yeah, okay. so, a lot of the subsidies have to do with security risk. Uh, but that leaves like, for example, I think it was in, I want to say not Florida, but it was in South Carolina that there was a hostage situation between a cyber attack company that extorted a company and they actually ended up paying it. Uh, and they caught the guy in Russia, but in order to, um, they, they paid him the ransom, but they don't know if the, those hackers are acting, uh, under the, you know, the, if the Kremlin, the Kremlin probably knows about them and maybe encourages them, but we don't know if it's sanctioned Russian attacks because they wouldn't want money in exchange like if it was a sanctioned attack, they wanted to be closed to just mess up America. They wouldn't give them the option of having it back. Yeah, that's big now is ransomware attacks where they just yeah. they'll they'll hack into a business and then shut down the business until the owner pays them like five hundred thousand dollars. That's crazy. Like okay, you can have your website back. The thing, the thing is, our government doesn't even know about these problems. These like. The people in Congress don't know about this shit, and some people are in the weeds on it, and they're voting on legislation that probably with the wrong scope on the topics, and we're going to end up totally open to attacks. I think we already are. Yeah. I think we're wide open. Yeah. I mean, we. the thing is, like, if you're really good at hacking, you're a hacker. You're not going to – like, those people that are, are really good at that shit, they're not, like, in security. They're the people that are, like, discovering the other vulnerabilities. Yeah. It's like in Catch Me If You Can when they hired that guy Frank Abagnale to like find the scammers before they get scammed because he was so good at scamming. Mm -hmm. We just have to set up. We have to figure out a way to hire all the people that are really Dude, fucking good at hacking. The guy, to work the for guy. Us. No, this is actually a hilarious story. The guy that leaked the GTA Six video in England, he was able to do it with a Roku usb drive in his phone in a hotel room after the british authorities had taken away his laptop and thought they took away all the tools he could use for hack and they literally institutionalized him hopefully to use his uh you know intelligence to help them counteract terrorism and hackers but they literally like you are so like you're so mentally ill to be good at hacking that we need to lock you up so if they're not using him to combat terrorists and he was only 16 yeah, that's when you get good at the internet, when you're like in your teens. That's crazy. Uh, we we, we got to hire some some young hackers that are like out there doing the hacking. Get them on our side before they get co-opted by somebody else. Yeah, they literally. So who's the guy who leaked GTA Six? Arion Cortage, who leaked uh, most. Who he was the one that caused the commercial to be released early. So they literally locked him up indefinitely. Yes, he was sentenced to indefinite stay in secure hospital. That is, they locked us up for being too much of a genius. It's like Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. So it, that's the, insane. The thing that scares me is that everything that we have is connected to the internet now. Of course. And there's too many apps. There's apps for everything. Everything. So Jerry, you just got a new house. Yes. How many new apps did you have to? So many install for on your my phone? ceiling fans. Yeah. My uh, the Bluetooth in the showers. I have multiple Bluetooths in the showers. I have. Bluetooth for my lights mm -hmm. um, that I can change the colors on the outdoor lights. That's kind of cool. Rings. Um, I have speakers being set up right now that are Bluetooth for my gym and sauna room. So there's a lot oh, of dude. You got things. a setup. Jerry's got a sick house. It's it like so. I have a lot of different stuff attached to it, and, and I get the alerts too all the time. A yeah. new device has been connected. Yeah, you know. I'm trying to think of the most the dumbest thing that I've had to download an app for. I had to download an app for my garage door. Me too. I have it. Yeah. No, my, my mine's Q. dumber. The coffee maker. You have to download an app for your coffee. Wow. 
Yeah. And it's not even like, so I can like start the coffee making when I wake up before I walk up there. It literally is just like to make me order an espresso stuff. But, uh, the craziest thing. Yeah. But I have a theory on this, that AI is making us intertwine with the internet so much so that they like AI has more control over us so that when they like, like Rocco's basculus try to take over and be God mm -hmm. uh, because they will become way more like AI will become better than human brain processing and knowledge and problem solving at a point because it's exponential growth. So when it gets there, if we're all dependent on internet of things stuff, we're, that means they have the ultimate power. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at my phone right now. I have a BMW app on my phone. I don't own a BMW. I don't know why that's on there. Mm hmm I have an app for my scale that I had to download to get my weight. I have an app. Let's see two speakers apps for different speaker systems. And Oh, I had to download an app to get the results of a COVID test like two years ago. Wow. They wouldn't just tell me on the thing yeah. like, Hey, you're positive. You're negative. It's like, no, download the app. And then you can find out if you're sick. You know, what's so fucked up. I have an app for hiking and camping. Which is supposed to be totally on technology. Yeah. And also that should be one app. Well, no, the camping is like book campsites. Okay. But they the the camping website should buy the hiking one. We, we you know, we got a big M and A opportunity right there. Yeah. We let me go talk to some dudes. I've got all these stupid apps on my phone. I've got so many. I've got so many on here. Uh, let's see. What's this other new one that I've got? Uh, the most touch helpful. tunes. I need that. I need touch tunes. That's a super easy one. Um, yeah. So we're, Billy's right. We are too connected to the internet where if, if they take out the internet, it's bad news. Horrible. What would you do if, if you tried to open up like your bank app on your phone, it was like, can't, can't do it. Can't access your money. Well, there's been already reports where even la large, like not even large sums, and you know, five thousand. This guy in Australia was trying to take out five grand for a car. And it's like, hey, you can't take out that much. Like, why not? So I saw what was going on in Australia because you told me about this. So I looked yeah. into it. I don't know if this is everything that was happening, but there are people that know. I mean, it's no secret that if everybody in America were to go to their bank and ask for all their money out at, on the same day, they could. Oh, oh crap! They couldn't give it to. Yeah, you. no. Because the way that it's set up, it's like, okay, they have your money. They're investing your money. It's guaranteed up to a certain amount, but they're using your money to make money for exactly, themselves. Exactly, 100%. So we all kind of agree into this system where it's like, yeah, you can hang on to it if you're good for it. Yeah. But we also know in the back of our heads that we can't all get it out at the same time. Yeah. So a bunch of people in Australia know that too. And they said that they wanted to go all to the bank at the same day mm. to make things more difficult to get money out. Which I like, you should be able to get your money out whenever yeah, you want. Yeah. But also, if you do that knowing it's going to create a problem, then you have created the problem that you thought was going to happen, but you kind of created it yourself. Yeah. So it's like a warning, like, hey, just so you know, if we all do this, we're fucked. But if, if all the, uh, all the banking info went down on one day, people would panic. Oh, yeah. I, and I didn't even know about this until like a year or two ago that in whatever number it says on your, banking app doesn't mean that's what you have you know i mean yeah it does but like you can't just go get that i didn't know that's like two years ago because they move your money around to yeah. make money you know dude you still get it's gold? pencil strike it's a pencil stroke uh capitalism like literally they can give you money like they lend out money four yeah. times the amount they actually have in the bank and that's how cash is created after paying interest on that, but it's, it's wild. Like how, like who the hell like legislated that in the, in the beginning of the banking system to allow them to lend out more money than they actually have. Well, it was real bad. That's how the great depression happened. Yeah. I mean, there was a bank run and stocks took like a big downturn and a bunch of financial institutions had a bunch of money invested in the stock market. It all went to nothing. People couldn't get their money out of the bank. They were broke. They had $0. And then the entire country kind of collapsed. Yeah. And so they did, they, that's why they put in, uh, the FDIC, yeah. which is it's insured up to what? A hundred thousand dollars, two fifty, two fifty per two. account. So which they have to have that 
amount of money to to give out they might not be able to give it all out at the exact same time but they're supposed to have up to 250 grand that's like backed up i mean you got like this this is like one of the great best arguments for bitcoin because it's basically going to be like there's going to be a finite amount of bitcoin at some point and like the cost of things it's going to be a great storage of wealth because there won't be inflation there won't be you know crazy offloads or creation it it'll just be stable as a asset i don't think it's stable though well it's state the only reason it's not stable is because like people either are not buying it or not selling it it's a storage of wealth in the long term and will be finite so um with bitcoin there's like been a shitload of hacks. If we're talking about cyber attacks, did you know, you remember a couple of years ago when it was like $600 million yeah. were stolen in yeah. Bitcoin? Yeah. It was taken from a place called Mt. Gox. That's like the, the, essentially the banking website that they had that people store their shit on. You know why that website's called Mt. Gox? Hmm. It's M T G O. I forget what, maybe X, but Mark. It, it's magic. The gathering online gaming something so it's mm -hmm. it was it was developed to be a magic the gathering like card trading thing oh wow that somebody developed and then the guy that was really into magic the gathering was like you know what i'm getting really into bitcoin let's just use my website to do bitcoin and then somebody hacked into it so i don't know i don't think that like bitcoin is that much safer than anything well else. no that's because uh that's a second like if you have a dead wallet no one can hack it. It's only people who store their Bitcoin on brokerages like Coinbase.com who who have the Bitcoin stored for you. That's where the, it gets stolen. If you have a dead wallet that is just a USB drive, you know, if you have it in a safe, it's you know, is or it's a live wallet, so it's bouncing around the blockchain. That is unhackable. But what is hackable is if you have it, if someone else owns your Bitcoin. I, I like. I like that Billy's like, so the one way to get around maybe potentially a bank collapsing is that you get all your shit in Bitcoin, Bitcoin. and then you keep your password in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you own Bitcoin? I, you know, I think I probably bought a little bit of it Can't back in 2020. Can't get it. No idea. Like yeah. I bought a bunch of those shit coins. Yeah. I got uh cum rocket. I bought ass coin. I think I definitely bought Dogecoin. I sold some of my Dogecoin, made a good profit on that. But the rest of it, I, I bought like a very small amount. It might yeah. be, I might just like have spent $5,000 yeah. just down the toilet. You know what I automatically think of? Like, I'm not saying I'm like an influencer because I don't think I am, but like there's been companies recently as like the last year or so. And I've always had companies like reach out to me like, hey, Jerry, can you promote our product? We'll give you this amount of money, whatever. But in the last year, there's been multiple companies where like, Hey, would you mind doing this for us? Promote this and we'll give you some Ethereum or give you like a little bit of Bitcoin or something like, yeah, no, I just think it's a scam right yeah, away. Those are, those are scammers for sure. Yeah. Cause what they do is they like to hear the name of their coin Yeah. and then they're like, okay, people are talking about our coin. So it's going okay. to increase in value. Then they sell all of it. Ah, uh, okay. And yeah, so they're just, just using you to like, to, to pump it up. Yeah. Like, but the, I don't understand how that works. Like. So People this is how it works. It, it gets, yeah, tell me, Billy. Tell me. This is how it works. So I'm making bill coin or, or macro coin, right? Okay. So like we create, we put in a certain amount of money to create this coin, right? And mm -hmm. to basically create shares of it. And then we're like, oh, hey, uh, Logan Paul, we have a bunch of this product, which is supposed to store value. And we have the most of it. Um, why don't we start selling it to people? So could you promote it for us? So people sell it. So Logan Paul goes, Oh, Hey, buy this new coin. So then people are buying it and, you know, more and more people are buying it and the supply goes up and the demand goes up. And then at a certain point, the first guy to own all of it dumps, takes all the money dumps all their coin and then everyone else is being held with the bag because their coin that was worth a certain amount of money mm. has now gone down to zero overnight because they are basically trading an unlicensed security. And how so, do they get away with this? Well, because it's un 
it's unregulated oh, originally. Okay. But the thing is, Bitcoin is different from all those other coins because it is number one, the most established and original. And number two, it has the most uh, widespread use. So, De- so it's more stable than the others, but it's definitely still subject to... Because there's no, like, whoever created it, and you can tell how much Bitcoin is everywhere. Like, it's all open source. So if there was one person who had, you know, a trillion Bitcoin in a wallet that's just waiting to drop it all on us and tank the whole Bitcoin market, you'd be able to see that. Actually, that might be, that could be possible, but they haven't done it yet. And if what, they do, what, what I mean, places it's are the greatest Bitcoin scheme or used to what, accept it. Th- that's the other thing. It's like you can have all this money, but yeah. if you can't spend it, yeah. anywhere, Who, then what's the point? Who's accepting Bitcoin as payment right now? Not, a lot of people. Is Amazon? I, so yeah. like buying Bitcoin, like Bitcoin mining parts, they all take crypto or like. Uh, okay, that's, so, yeah, that's no, precisely who yeah. I would expect to take yeah, Bitcoin. Right, right. But other, no, other Bitcoin companies. Yeah, yeah. But real businesses, yeah, real businesses do not real accept Bitcoin. Real businesses accept Bitcoin. A lot of, like I'm who? trying to figure out how to accept Bitcoin as a campaign donation. Okay, but what businesses? That sounds like it could get you in a... Because, that could li- that could land Billy and Jill so, so fast. So I'm I had a, was trying a story. to figure it out. I didn't say I'm doing it, but I'm trying to figure out how to do it right. Apparently, years ago, there was this pizzeria that was accepting Bitcoin. And I never believed my friend because he's crazy into this type of stuff, but he has some Bitcoin and he remembers years and years ago, there was this kid that he knew who sold one Bitcoin for a pizza. Yeah. That that was a guy online. It was 22 Bitcoin for a large pizza. Because that's a real story. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a wide known story about Bitcoin and how that guy basically paid millions of dollars for a pizza if he just kept it he would have been rich so here are all the companies that accept bitcoin from across the the web twitch overstock paypal starbucks home depot the dallas mavericks starbucks Tesla. i don't think you can walk into a starbucks and order a coffee and pay with bitcoin let me let me look behind that one uh home depot you with can back sure B-A-K-K. you go to you make like nine runs to home depot yeah. a week that's the can last store in the world that takes Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can no I can shot. I be like, hey, can I, let me get let me get five cinder blocks? Yeah. <laughs> they just started taking credit cards. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they do you not accept use... Bitcoin. Okay. So b a k k b a k k t dot com. If you use that <laughs> uh, app, you can okay. then use it to buy stuff from Starbucks, Whole Foods, AMC. So it's like a PayPal that you yeah. give yeah. your Bitcoin to, and then. But yeah. like just walking into a store and buying something, you can't you can't like so, tap a card. So that third party is taking your Bitcoin exactly. and then giving the other company real money. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. So they don't take Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. well, w- Wikipedia. Yeah, but right. Billy, you're going through a third party. Right. And they're but paying those still, businesses but, U.S. currency. That those businesses right, don't that take third Bitcoin. Party has allowed them to accept Bitcoin. They're not accepting Bitcoin. They're but getting for paid example, money. Who do you think banks? Who do you think banks for all those large corporations? When you're paying, right at that, uh, when you're paying at that, uh, you know, if you're scanning your card or you're at that credit card machine, where do you think that money is going before it's being given? to the company a third party or you talking about like bank of america right or those you things are completely unrelated or you could have cash no. or yeah because it's right but u.s currency ca- right but that currency like if you use a credit card it's going through a third party even like uh not paypal but uh squarespace that the one where you they turn the thing around and it's like tip your barista like all those programs are a third party that they use to get the currency in the end. So what's correct, the between- correct. But the whole thing was, but those B-A-K-K-T businesses aren't is getting the currency in the end as well. Right. But that has nothing to do with what we were talking about. The businesses, you can't walk in there and pay in Bitcoin because they don't take Bitcoin. They're getting cash from that other company. There are a lot of places that sell sketchy supplements online that accept Bitcoin. <laughs> there you go. That's, I believe that. Yeah. that that's a place I know. You can do a healthy amount of business with scammers. Yeah. If you're paying with Bitcoin. Science.bio. Do you think you can buy more things that are legal or illegal with Bitcoin? Illegal. Illegal. I think the dark web, you could probably use Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you probably have to. Yes. 
What do you think the the most illegal thing that you can buy with Bitcoin is? Oh, dude, dude man. that's how illegal thing got yeah. started. Oh, you can probably dude. buy a human. Buy you a human, a full human. Yeah, you can buy you can buy a dude. Child you can buy weapon like stashes. Yeah. Yeah. People think that the reason why Bitcoin's bumped two years ago was because of not only COVID, but then when Russia invaded Ukraine. How do you think Russia has been buying weapons? So from Iran. Right, but North what do you Korea, think they're using China. to try to avoid detection by like U.S. Sanctions. forensic, U.S. forensic uh, uh, um, monetary investigators? Yo, can they're I let me let, permission to go off real quick about the Russian military? They they suck. Go for it. Yeah, can I? Yeah. Are you yeah. well? Are you pro or anti? They've they've been talking a big fucking game for the last ten years about the Su fifty seven, about their new fifth generation airplane. They're like, oh, this is better than the F-22. It's the best airplane we've ever seen. It's going to change the game. Russia, no one's going to be able to shoot down this aircraft. Look, it can do the Cobra maneuver and, and fly up in the air and look like a leaf. It can climb 64,000 feet in a matter of minutes. They're in a fucking war against Ukraine right now, fought to a standstill. This bitch airplane has been nowhere to be found in Ukraine. They haven't even used it. You want to know why? Because it's not even stealth. It, no. it it doesn't even have stealth technology no. to it. They, they were they were lying the whole time. They were like, "This airplane is so stealthy. We're going to be able to be undetectable USA. on radar. We're going to be able to sneak around all the air defenses that that uh, the, that NATO and the United States can ship to the Ukraine. We're going to be great." They haven't even flown that bitch over Ukraine yet because no. they know it's going to get caught on radar. And then we're going to shoot it down. There's like 50 of them in existence. And you would think that in a war like this, they would take their airplane that they've sunk billions of dollars into, into developing, if not trillions. They've sunk a fuckload of money into it. They haven't even flown it out there yet. This little Dude. bitch aircraft is not stealth. They claimed it was stealth. That's why nobody else is buying it in the entire world. The United States Air Force would shoot that mother. We got F-16s that are flying around in Ukraine right now that are going to shoot down an SU-57 if it shows its ugly face. Dude, that just That's gave a, me a freedom boner. Yeah, yeah. Russia's, Russia's Does airplanes, Russia have the fakest planes? They, it's a big fake plane. It's a fake plane. They basically, what they did was they took their, their old planes and they put some lipstick on the front of it. And they're like, oh, look at this new technology. Look how great it is. It's well, basically Putin, a FUPA. Fake, faked up plane. Yeah, it's a faked ass. up plane. <laughs> Faked up plain ass. Fupa. Fupa. That, that, Russia's got Fupa. That bitch has not been seen anywhere. And they, you better believe if it was a good airplane, they would have been using it for the last two years. But they're too afraid to show it. Yep. But Sorry. The, the only thing that Russia's had from a military tactical advantage throughout their history is just literally sending people to their death. Yeah, like, just using a bunch of... They've, they've had more people that were willing to die than everybody. Well, that and yeah. also the weather. The weather, yes. And also, like, literally they're offering people houses and uh, pensions for their family indefinitely, mm -hmm. like, for people to enroll. And the thing is, that's not that much money in these villages out in Siberia, in the Caucasus region. So, what? like, they're they're getting the what, so many the what people region? to enroll. Like, Caucasus? Caucus, like like Secaucus, New Jersey. <laughs> I the caca the caucus mouth. Uh, it's the caucus mountains. Yeah, no, where's the caucus? No, it's definitely it's not. not. Uh, Billy, are you Caucasian or are you Caucasian? Caucasian. That, that those are hawks. Yeah. Caucasian. <laughs> Ca caucus. Yeah, no, it's you're thinking of, you're thinking of Secaucus. No, I'm thinking ca C A U C A S U S, caucus. Oh no, I added an extra C. Uh my bad. But anyway, um the, the Ukrainians are just saying that in a lot of their firefights, they've just been running out of bullets, and that's the only reason they've had to retreat. They're just taking on these like zombie hordes and then they run out of bullets, and that's why they have to retreat. Yeah, that and they're bitch ass planes. I have a Ukrainian tile guy that did my tile in my bathroom upstairs. He can't go back to Ukraine right now. Yeah. Because it's like it's a war zone. Yeah, yeah. Dude, There's a lot of Ukrainians, Ukrainians here in Chicago. There's a lot. I didn't know. Dude, there was a lot of Ukrainians U here. Ukrainians are tough motherfuckers. Yeah, Dude. He, he looks like a tough guy. Dude, there we got the the Klitschko brothers. Yeah, that former heavyweight champions. Now they're just full time fighting in a war. Crazy. Now Imagine around accidentally guns. getting into a trench with a Klitschko brother one on one. Yeah. 
That's um, terrifying. We were actually both wrong, and Billy was half right. It's Caucasus. Isn't the Caucasus region? I'm saying Caucasus. Yeah, okay. it's ca- 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 Caucasus. Caucasus. We're both wrong. Okay. At, we're all just ca- Caucasus at heart. Yeah. Um. Okay. You want to talk a little bit more about cyber warfare? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there have been a lot of instances of uh, China trying to fuck with us, like stealing shit. Um, sometimes they'll they'll send people to the United States and have them go to college in the U.S. and then get hired by a U.S. company and then send all the shit back to ch- like competing Chinese companies mm. to steal the intellectual property. The FBI director, Christopher Wray, testified before Congress. He said that hackers linked to the Chinese government are targeting critical elements of American infrastructure, including water treatment plants, oil and natural gas pipelines, and transportation hubs. Yeah, that would suck. It, what if they just shut down? It's in uh, Die Hard, the new Die Hard, where they just shut down all the traffic lights, and then everyone just gets into car accidents with each other. Then you can't drive anywhere because yeah. there's gridlock. They're not just focused on political and military targets. We can see from where they position themselves across civilian infrastructure. Low, bo- low blows aren't just a possibility in the event of conflict. Low blows against civilians are part of China's plan. Ray said. Ray stressed that the government concerns are not linked to Chinese Americans or Chinese nationals in the U.S who he said were themselves often targets of Beijing's aggression. That's also true. They'll try to compromise somebody that is over here in the U.S. and imply that their family back home is in danger if they don't play ball with what the Chinese government is telling them to do. Mm. Um, His comments came a day after the government announced it had disrupted a sweeping Chinese cyber spying operation that was targeting elements of American infrastructure. Dude, I mean, that's why they have those Chinese police stations on American soil to enforce this kind of stuff from the information they pick up from places like TikTok. Yeah, whatever happened to that TikTok ban? Well, I don't they're know. trying to they're trying to divest the Chinese government, which they need to get the re- the wording right on that uh bill because basically if they're like anyone deemed hostile to American uh uh American issues and interests can be taken away from, but like they need to make it a hostile foreign nation. Like that's what's wrong with the whole bill right now. Where do we stand on that, Billy? As a, as a Republican running for Congress, Republicans are saying one thing, uh, Trump is saying a different thing. We need to just make sure that the bill cannot be used against well-meaning Americans and be used to attack our own uh, businesses and uh, well-meaning American citizens. Jerry, what percentage of, of your news do you think you get from TikTok? 98. <laughs> Almost all of it. Ninety-eight. I mean, I mean, I I use it for other things too. But I've noticed, which is I know it happens to a lot of people, but I've been noticing it even more. You say something, and it appears on TikTok or IG. It's crazy. Yeah, I forget. It was. I think we were trying to find this specific yogurt. It's like a vanilla something yogurt, and that it's been sold out at the supermarket. You know, by uh, my house for like two or three weeks now, and it's our favorite yogurt. And all of a sudden, probably 30, 40 minutes after leaving the grocery store, my girlfriend's on Instagram, scrolling, scrolling, ad for that yogurt. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. We did that experiment on this show one time. Really? We'll do it with you right now. Okay. You know what I'm really in the uh, looking for, Jerry, and what mm-hmm. I think you would really enjoy purchasing for mm-hmm. your home? Mm-hmm. A new fishing rod. Okay, I if, like fishing. You like fishing I rod? I do, I like fishing. Maybe get a reel, get a rod. Yeah. Um, go out, fish for some bass. Yeah, sure. Would you be down for that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe at some point you'll get a directed ad for fishing equipment or a fishing rod that pops into your phone. So, he, I saw people were give, give it some time. Let the algorithm cook okay, on it for okay, a second. Okay. Yeah. Tell me when. Just tell me when. Yeah, yeah. What's that, Billy? We when we did it, people were sending responses. Yeah, that they got fishing rod advertising. Yeah, they're wow. like, I've never fished ever in my life and I'm getting fishing rod ads. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. But you get a lot of your information from TikTok? Yeah. I mean, I follow a couple different accounts on Twitter, not many. But you're a smart guy. When you're going through TikTok, are you like, it smells like bullshit ever? Yeah, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. A lot of times. But then the back of your head, you're like, but maybe. Some stuff. It depends on like, you know, like I have went into TikTok holes about this Malaysia thing. Yeah. And what I've got from it was there were Russians on the airplane and they were sitting towards first class where underneath first class there's like a rug 
but if you lift that up, in, you can walk down a, a stairs. It's like a ladder, and that's where all the mechan the mechanic stuff is. Like mm -hmm. you can control the, you can hack the airplane through that system, and that's kind of what I think might have happened. Mm -hmm. That they talked about that in the documentary. Yeah, but what was yeah. I, I forget? What was their reasoning again for why they would want to do that? Um, I don't know. I forget. Yeah, I don't know what they if they addressed that. There might have been like some sort of cargo that was on board. Yeah, something divert. like that. Yeah, but it, you would have to do you would have to turn off every transponder at the same time. Then you would have to know exactly what route you would need to take, take to get yeah. around all the different secondary radar. Yeah, and then end up in that one. Place. Seems very difficult. It seems really difficult. Yeah, but the, actually, the more fascinating thing to me was. There's this dude, I think he might be in Australia. I forget where the guy was. Oh, the guy that was going around finding the parts or no? Oh, no, that, that guy, the uh, treasure hunter guy. Yeah, 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 that guy was like Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think his like professional title is just adventurer, which <laughs> yeah. that rocks. But uh, there's a, a new guy that claims that he has the exact flight path of where it ended up going because yeah. there's all these like tiny little radio transmissions that are flying around the world at any given time. Okay. So like satellites bouncing shit off each other. Yeah. Like the air is filled with these signals that are bouncing back and forth. Mm -hmm. And this guy figured out a way. I don't know if he was the one that invented the way, but um, it's you've been able to look at all these signals for uh, for like a, a dozen years or so, mm -hmm. and you can sometimes pick out a specific thing that's traveling through the air. Yeah. And you can follow its path based on the small anomalies in um, the radio signals that are being broadcast back and yeah. forth. And this guy claims it was the only plane that was in the middle of that part of the world at that given time, because there aren't any planes that fly in like the Southern Indian ocean. Okay. That's just not like a flight route to be able yeah. to take. And this guy claims that he traced the exact path of where the jet ended up. And it's like, I think 50 or a hundred miles away from where they initially thought that it was mm -hmm. where they did the first search. So this guy is saying that the first search was on the right track. They were just a little bit off based on his like analysis of all these radio waves and yeah. shit, which what, is crazy. What I still don't understand is how, do, I, don't, I just still don't get it with the technology we have. How does that happen? How do they not find a plane? I don't understand. Yeah. I guess it's a big ocean. Are, are you talking about like during the search? Form. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's a bit. It's, I think the truth is it's like very expensive to do it. Yeah, because you I, have to you have so, to yeah. send like a very complicated ship out there yeah. with expensive equipment. It's got you a think whole, it's in the ocean. It's got a whole crew. I think it's in the ocean. Yeah. Or did it go across the ice wall? Yeah, that's Billy's theory. Billy's. It would be just so. Billy's cool. low key a flat earther. I'm not yeah. a flat earther. I just think there's. Well, I said more low key. In it. No, 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 not flat. Cavernous. Cavernous earther. What do you think about flat earth? Not not flat, cavernous, and I mean, neither hollow. I cavernous. don't know much about the earth. I, I haven't been to many places. I mean, what I don't understand is I feel like you can just keep driving. Yeah. You can. <laughs> Elaborate on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like... You hit the water eventually. No, yeah, no, they... no. No? Just keep going. Yeah, just keep going through the water. <laughs> just drive through. Do you think of it... So eventually you're going to circle back, you think, to... So, okay, if I leave Chicago right now yeah, and I just go in, outside and make a left and just go all the way down. <laughs> just go all the way left. I don't think I'm ever going to come back to this spot. <laughs> yeah? Well, if you could go, if you had an amphibious vehicle that could yeah. go through and you stayed in a straight line, yeah. you would eventually get back. Has anybody, you think so. Has anybody, I, I know so. We should try it. Has anybody ever done that on land, though? On land? Yeah, obviously. Well, there's, you can only get to a certain driven, point on land. If you, can, you stayed in a straight line, you'd get when to, what, it, Washington or When Oregon? does it stop, though? No, someone's taken the ferry from Alaska. Like, there's a ferry that goes from Alaska to Russia. Yeah, that's a, that's a short trip. And they they were able to go from Patagonia. Should we build a wall in say, Alaska? Yeah. Keep the Russians out? But no, but wait, Billy, what if... What if we took Jerry's experiment? He just drove left when he got out. Yeah. We set Jerry up with ATVs. We set him up with trucks, with boats, and he just goes left. And when he when he hits the water, he just keeps going left, but this time in a boat. And then he just goes across Europe, ATV, goes across Russia, ATV, goes across the water again in the Pacific. And then goes across the United States. Has anybody ever done 
a perfectly straight line yeah. around the world on the ground perfectly straight i don't think so but people have sailed and taken routes honestly cycling is one of the easiest ways apparently e easiest yeah you think that's easier than driving in a car <laughs> i think from an organizational standpoint a mountain bike <laughs> is better than <laughs> to, to, to pedal a bike around the world Dude, right, you're saying out. it'll we will eventually come back to where we started in yes, theory if you stayed in a perfectly straight line wow. i don't know crazy, i think it? there's How some more stuff in antarctica than we think years right well so you could drive from here to whatever the westernmost part of washington is if you go take just take a left yeah, on yeah, the map yeah, start yeah. going okay that'd take you two days yeah then from there you'd need to take a boat to where korea would be the first place you'd let me, let me pull up a map yeah now exactly. i need to see no no i think it's so actually i think would... it's actually farther south i think it's like tokyo all right so like japan korea that'd take you probably a week then you drive from there through china you, and asia you know, you'd, you'd have to take a boat to china that would be the worst part traveling well, if you're in korea days. you could drive up and through yeah. No, but we need to do a straight line here. Well, you'd have to I'm go saying. through North Korea. You probably don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm I'm looking at where you, where you would go here in a straight we, line. So we are literally I, I'm revisiting at a, the reason why Columbus discovered America. <laughs> yeah, but we want to find out for ourselves. So, Jerry, would you want to go towards Europe or towards Asia first? Asia, get it out the way. Get, <laughs> it's big. It's big. So it looks like you would go directly across the Pacific Ocean. Okay. You would hit, it's looking like, uh, the northern, kind of northernish part of Japan. Mm -hmm. Then you go across the Sea of Japan. You'd have to go through North Korea, it looks like. And then from North Korea, you could go, it looks like you could go straight into China okay. from there. And then you'd have to drive all the way across China. Then Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, maybe Turkmenistan, then the Caspian Sea, then Russia again, then the Black Sea, and then you'd hit Europe, and you'd hit Bulgaria, Romania, maybe Greece, then Italy, then Spain, then Portugal, then all the way back to the United States. Where, where, where was the? Where would be the point where I hit in the United States? You would, you would come back to Chicago. The exa if you took. But you're, you're saying on the East Coast. East Coast, yeah, probably that's what I'm like uh, East Coast around Delaware, New York. Maryland. Not, it's looking like maybe uh, Massachusetts. New York. New York. Wow. Somewhere up there. How long do yeah. you think that would take? A year. Years. I think it's a good question. I mean, if you so had the everything set up by bike. Guys, remember our guy, the toughest geezer who ran through Africa that I've been also trying to get on this podcast, who's just completed his run from South Africa to Tunisia? Same distance to the moon. It yeah. wasn't that far <laughs> off from like. Billy said that this guy that ran through Africa ran the distance to the moon and back. He no, I did not. I said that he you could by the way, using his pace, you could get to the moon in sixty years if you ran at his pace that he currently was just running. So like hypothetically so pretty doable. Hypothetically you could run to the moon at his pace that he's been going. It would just take sixty years. Okay. How just the circumference of the world. And this wouldn't be the entire world. Wait, let because... me guess that. Let me guess that. All right. That's going to be twenty six thousand miles. That's pretty close. Twenty four thousand miles. Wow, I'm good at Whoa. guessing shit at the equator. So, am this... I crazy or is it like yes. all your blood vessels stretched out go around the world? I, uh, You're gonna have to look it up now. Yeah, <laughs> how long? Are... Sounds like a myth, it's, but um. Billy's kind of right. They would stretch for nearly 60,000 miles. That's enough to circle the earth almost three times. Wow. One person's? Yep. The body, yeah. That's crazy. That is nuts. That's even crazier than I remember. What the fuck? Arteries, veins, and capillaries make up for a vast... Uh, I, I need to look into that. That capillaries, seems fake. How is that possible? That seems fake. How is that possible? So capillary. I... No, it's because of the capillaries. They're so small. Those, like That's like... Literally, that's like saying that like the microscopic parts of your tissue that carry the blood like stretched out it would literally be like if you were to make your whole body as thin as possible it would stretch around the world 
that still to me doesn't seem possible. Yeah, I mean, like I know, were, I know. I'm reading just like you are. Sixty thousand miles. How is how, that's how is fake. sixty thousand miles fake. inside my body right that's now? That's fake. No, it does that mean that our be... that means that our dicks are at least like thirty thousand miles long? <laughs> yeah, technically, if you really stretch it out. My dick could go around the world one time. <laughs> how about that? Uh, all right, so back to the original convo here. Twenty four thousand. It's about twenty five thousand miles around the Earth. This would be not at the equator, so it'd probably be my. I'm just gonna ballpark it. Eighteen thousand miles. Okay, is what I'm thinking that Jerry would have to travel here. Fuck it. Let's just say twenty. Twenty thousand as opposed to twenty five thousand. So twenty thousand miles. You're driving when you can drive. At I'm gonna say like thirty miles an hour because you're on an ATV, so mm-hmm. you don't necessarily have roads. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. He he can't get in a car. No, he can. But if, if we're doing it in a, a straight line, right? Okay. I see what oh, you're Jerry, going for Jerry, are you saying there. like perfectly straight line or are you saying you can drive on highways and shit? Perfectly straight. Perfectly straight line. Well, then he's eventually going to cross a highway and get creamed by a car. So. Well, that's why it would be easiest on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who it is. All right. No, well, that, that's what I was saying. There's why hasn't somebody tried this somebody, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like somebody somebody should, would have no, someone tried. has tried to bike around the world by using a bike and then waterways. Somebody is. Tr- somebody should try to. Do they die? No. Well, they almost got shot in Afghanistan. Cycling around the world. <laughs> the man who cycled around the world on less than five dollars a day. He set off on a round the world cycling adventure with no route plan, very little equipment, and just nine thousand thirteen thousand uh, dollars. He cycled across all five continents. W- no, wait. Okay. That doesn't count Antarctica. Wait. Now, what kind of boat yeah. is he in? Because that's going to make the biggest difference. That's true. So across the Pacific, boat. you could be in a yeah fast boat. Okay. Well, let's see. Let me. I, I need to find the exact. So biking. I know it sounds crazy, but biking was kind of easier because you can go over a lot more terrains. Yes, from ATV? the roads of the Canadian Arctic and dusky trails of South Africa to the verdant green surroundings of Lesotho, it's easier in that you can cross more. Uh, parts of the world that you couldn't buy like car like i'm thinking of like a turtle versus the hair scenario where like the hair breaks down in the arctic tundra but the bike you can just keep going on yeah. a bike you can but the personally pedal a bike when it's negative 40 degrees yeah like this okay. guy i what is his trip okay i found right. this guy he's done it he's done it Ben Page. He was 22 years old. That's a man who's looking for adventure. Okay, so if it's 20,000 miles across, across Three the entire years, globe, five continents. And let's say that you're going 35 miles per hour, right? So what would that be? 20,000. Help me do the math here, Big T. 20,000 divided by 35. 20,000 divided by 35 is 571. That's the amount of hours that it would take you? Okay. So divide that by 24. It's going to give you 20. 24 days. It says that you could do it in 24 days if you were averaging 35. How has this, nobody tried this? It's yet. insane that no one's actually Jackie tried. Took Jackie Chan 80. Yeah. It's a good point. Yeah. Um, but he would took a more. Y'all could have laughed at that. That was okay. Well, don't I mean, the, it. <laughs> it, was a, it was a book before it was a movie. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what the character's name in the book is. Sorry. Okay. No, it's fine. Would that have? Would you think that would have made people laugh more? Yeah, I would have laughed yeah. more. Sure. If you had said Phineas Fogg, I would have laughed. Right. Mm-hmm. Never read or seen it. <laughs> he also took a different route, though, right? Like he had to, he had to wiggle around. Nobody's done it perfectly straight yet. Yeah. Dude, you'd be such a big celebrity by the time you got back to the U.S. Yeah, but then oh I feel like everybody God. would forget about it in a week. Yeah, definitely. A week. Yeah. <laughs> you, you think you get a week out of that? I might. Have. I don't no, know. No, no. You get like an afternoon. Yeah. The guy that lit himself on fire got like three hours. Yeah. <laughs> it would It would, It would. would take you. People would forget about that oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Instantly. Okay. So this guy, this guy, this actually guy had a sick route. He, he missed <laughs> Africa though, but he went, he started in London, took a boat to Iceland, a boat to looks like Newfoundland, then biked across the United States. Looks like he got to LA. Then he went to New Zealand, boat to Australia, boat through Indonesia, 
that's dicey. Uh, boat to Tha- I mean, boat to Thailand, then bike through China, Mong- uh, just China, through the tips of Afghanistan. He went through Iran, and then he went through the the Caucasus, the C- the Caucasus, through Turkey, then through Europe, up towards uh germany and then he went got back to london so that was his around the world journey wow okay so he came back to the same spot yeah he got back to the same spot jerry i think you can do this so that just proves that it's not flat uh well uh, antarctica yeah he didn't but antarctica is at the bottom i just think it would be really cool if there was like a total like alien civilization in antarctica that we just don't know about that would be cool how big is it antarctica not that big big. it's not that big it's just it looks big on a map everybody says it's huge but i don't think it's that big it looks big on a map because it's at the bottom so when you when you put a take a a globe and you flatten it out it's It's everywhere at the bottom how big is it it's bigger than the united states is it yeah i did not know that yeah, you could fit. Isn't there some parts we just can't go to in our Antarctica? Wonder why. Probably most of it, right? Because the aliens. Antarctica. Yeah, Antarctica would look like if you put them on top of each other. Antarctica like envelops the United States. All right. So. Oh. It's- so it's doable to get across Antarctica. I guess, it, yeah, it would be. We actually had someone on the podcast who who walked across Antarctica, and even though we met him, I still I don't, don't trust him. I don't believe that guy. You don't believe him? No shot. Did you meet that guy? No, but it's way too cold. Yeah, it is really fucking cold. There's no shot. It doesn't matter what kind of gear he has. So, uh, yeah, no, I think theoretically it would be possible, and I think you could do it in about, about realistically 40 days. Yeah. 40 days in a straight line. Anyways, uh, back to more cyber shit. Uh, they're trying to attack the mobile networks too. So the more damage that cyber warfare can do on a populace uh, is directly proportional to like how much of your daily life is filtered through the internet. So the three main manifestations of cyber attacks on mobile networks are data breaches, unknown surveillance, and service disruption. The average cost of a data breach in the U.S. was $3.86 million. Oh. So in other words, like $148 per person that's using it. Hmm. They also try to uh, break into things like the stock market to manipulate stocks, commit other forms of economic disruption. It'd be sick if they just like hacked into... A stock bit, you had? Well, I was going to say t- maybe take this out, but if they hack into like a, a gambling app and they give you really good odds yeah. for a little bit and oh. you, you happen to be on the site when that <laughs> when that strikes and you get a great yeah. line. Plus 25,000, Mahomes would throw a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That would rock. Jerry, what if they, for one day, if uh, the odds on the Steelers to win the Super Bowl were like plus 50,000 or plus 100,000? Let's say it's plus a, plus a million. Right is is the odd that you're getting on there yeah. right now? How much money would you put on that? Plus minimum a minimum thousand. Oh, minimum more than that. You'd have to take advantage. Yeah. You're not going to get a good line like that ever again. Yeah, but they're probably not going to the Super Bowl. I also don't want to waste money. That's true. Uh, but I would, I would love it if just hypothetically somebody were to do that as I was like at the start of March. Oh. Um, have you guys heard of the the Stuxnet virus? No. Stuxnet, Stuxnet. It was a worm that we we used to attack the Iranian nuclear program. So Iran was trying to develop nukes, and it was malware that was spread through universal serial bus devices, and it targeted data acquisition, supervisory control systems. Hmm. It damaged Iran's ability to manufacture nuclear weapons. It was first uncovered in 2010. Hmm. It had been thought to have been developed in 2005. Though neither country has admitted responsibility, multiple news organizations have recognized that it was the joint product of the U.S. and Israeli governments as a part of an effort titled Operation Olympic Games started during the George W. Bush administration and expanded in the opening months of Obama's first term. So we just, instead of like bombing their nuclear facility, we just made sure they gave them virus. Yeah. I actually think there's a good possibility that like governments are going to be taken down in the future on Instagram hacks. Just like somebody is going to, there's going to be a president that's in office that's horny, clicks on a DM, clicks on a link, 
and then all of a sudden his phone's hacked, the entire <laughs> government's hacked. Yeah. Just because like a hot chick sent him a yeah. DM one time. I don't doubt that. They're gonna fall for a nudes in bio. Yeah, nudes in bio. Yeah. Oh, there was actually a really interesting article that somebody wrote about nudes in bio where they figured out like who was behind all the mm -hmm. nudes in bio. And it's like some live cam website. That they can't be making any actual money off that, right? Yeah, right, because everyone just Andrew Tate thinks a it's a scam. Live cam. No, you know? there's yeah. a lot. You you underestimate the horniness of men around the world. Online. No, you you underestimate and uh, underestimate the power of old men around the world. Also, foreign men who don't speak English and are encountering them randomly. I think Andrew Tate made millions off of live cam stuff. I yeah, have... the the live, but this is like I'm sure you can, but yeah. we're saying the the like replies to tweets. Oh, okay. Like everybody just knows that's a bot, yeah. so like nobody's clicking. I, on I mean, I I I'm gonna sit this one out. <laughs> <laughs> Every I now and again, you click as it's everyone's in a blue. You just <laughs> see what this is about, but they're all fake. They're all fake. They're not. They're not actual people. I've cause... I've started getting them where it's just the reply is the porn yeah yeah like they don't have to click anything it's just there yeah i've or seen that too straight up news how does twitter allow like porn? porn i don't know i think i think it's free speech right yeah i guess so i think so because you, you know there's a whole nother porn twitter world right there's another twitter yeah yeah there's another twitter for just strictly dick pussy yeah in and out yeah, <laughs> yeah. well they've they tried to invade <laughs> no you're, you're right by like underneath and our, it, Every now and again, what I what I see is like people that have replied to like something that I tweet out. Some every now and again, I'll like click on that person's bio yeah. and just see what other kind of tweets are putting out. Yeah, my favorite is when someone's like talking shit. Yeah, and then I see their replies and they're replying to like porn stars yeah. being like, "Oh, I would I would love for you to just drown me in your squirt." Bitch. Yeah, that's, that's just <laughs> I got one yesterday that I was shocked. This is a real person. Yeah, I'm gonna don't say the name or anything. I don't want to put nobody on blast. Whatever. Okay. But oh, you screenshot it? Yeah, no. I, well, this guy. Sent okay. This message. Don't read it. Okay. You got a message from somebody. Uh huh. It's a religious yeah, message. Yeah, yeah. I'm know? reading the message. Then you and then you click page. on his page, and then oh, he's just he's just a naked just a uh, that's just a dude's just, dick in a shower. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. That is that is nuts. Yeah. Wait, who who sent you that? Why? It's just I'm not going to reveal the details of it because I don't want to put the guy on blast. But it's an actual it's the, the, a porn Twitter. Guy. Yeah, porn Twitter is a real thing. Yeah. Every, sometimes, um, you remember that girl that sucked off the the Phoenix Suns in the hotel room? That she was talking about it. Uh, is that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So her and I got into a little back and forth right after this happened. Oh wow. We became very close and uh, how close? Not not that. Close. I think okay. she got into several back and forths. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've, we've gone back and forth at each other a few times. Uh, and bonk. Well, no, it's not. It's not horny. She was a, a part of like a major yeah, sports story, sure, yeah. so I wanted to find out more about the sports story. She is, she's crazy, um, but she's very active on social media. Okay, and I still follow her. And sometimes I, re I, I regret doing that because I'll just be like scrolling, yeah. and then next thing is just like I'll see a guy just jacking off yeah. on my timeline because it's one of her followers that like yeah. replied exactly. with a video of him jacking off to yeah. her, and then she retweeted it. Oh yeah. God! Yeah. I'm like, come on! I'm like, come on! Yeah. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. But uh yeah, there's you're right, there's a whole nother Twitter. Yeah. Um whole nother Twitter. But yeah, don't get hacked. No. Also, when did they switch from pussy in bio to nudes in bio? Yeah, I don't know. It all happened all at once. Think there's, think, there's just one guy running this thing. Yeah, there's one guy. There's he's gotta like, be. He's like he's like at a coffee shop. Yeah. Like scratching his head. How he's many like, did we get today? He's like, What do I need? I <laughs> we need to do something fresh. We need a new <laughs> initiative. I know. It's going to be pussy and bio. Yeah, but make I sure mean, all the, make sure all the letters have a space. Oh in my yeah. god! Even so, Jim Toes, Jim Toes, he tweeted something. I was saying like, okay, let's see if Jim Toes is getting pussy and bio. He is getting it. Everyone's it's, getting it's it. It's ever since he's gotten involved, he's getting it as well. I get pussy and bioed. You get pussy and bio? <laughs> yeah. I haven't gotten pussy and bio in a while. I, for me, it's all just nudes and bio. Oh, I get pussy and bio I get nudes and bio. Six, hour ago, six hours ago, there was a, 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 a P-U-S-S-Y in, in bio oh my that was God, posted really? to Jim Toes. I want to know, I, I know from the person that started pussy and bio. Like, come on the show. I want to I pick your brain about a lot of stuff. I want to know how it's working for you. I want to know if you, have they made any money off it? Yeah. 
It's just they the have to make account. money. There's on also the gambling bots too. Yeah, the gambler, one hundred percent free, one hundred percent rigged match. Yeah, yeah. Some every now and again, I'll I'll tell them. <laughs> I feel like this sounds sounds rigged. I want to get in on this. Um, all right, well, Jerry, thank you for stopping by. Of course, such fun. You got anything else you want to bring up? No, maybe next time. Maybe next time we can talk about. I, I'd like to talk about Disney a little bit. Okay, I'd like to talk about Disney. Yeah, what about Tunnels? Diddy? It sounds like maybe we can talk. Well, about Diddy, Diddy, Diddy is all Diddy's off the hook. You know that, right? No. Yeah, he's off the hook. He'll, he'll never get charged with anything. Why? They wouldn't let him get charged with anything. That was all. That was all bullshit. That, so the raid okay. was just wait, to wait, get the evidence. Wait, so, yeah. The, so the the boat was a distraction man. from Diddy, but Diddy. I don't a, believe that anymore, though. Okay, but Diddy's a distraction from something else. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a distraction. I just think what they know. They can't reveal because if they do so, they'll be telling them on themselves. Okay, I I actually think with Diddy and who knows, he sounds like just a scumball in general. Yeah. Um, but like Epstein was a honeypot, collected a bunch of blackmail and a lot of very important people across yeah. the world. Diddy ran in a similar circle, but more entertainment, but very very powerful gotcha. people. Yeah. If he was probably a scumbag, just like Epstein was. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Diddy's being a scumbag, people identify, hey, this scumbag can actually get us dirt on exactly. everybody else. Yeah. And maybe Diddy was feeding them some information. True, true. In which case, we'll see what happens. Did you see the Justin Bieber video? I did, yeah. Yeah. Wait, Remember which I one? Can't, can't party with Diddy anymore. By the way, remember I was saying this months ago, like almost maybe a year ago, and everyone was like, oh, Billy's bringing up Justin Bieber. And, he's and I was literally like, this is a weird thing between P. Diddy and Justin Bieber. And no one listened to me. We should have listened. We should have listened, Billy. I but I've said this about like multiple things that have come true in the end. And Billy's like Alex Jones. Billy was right. Next time I want to talk about the tunnels in Disney. Okay, we'll talk Disney tunnels. We'll get you back on. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, we'll see you guys you, next week. Love you guys. Also, Arian might put out a surprise podcast with Madeline. Oh, by the way, tune in to Last Chance Uganda, last episode ever, uh, and the second game, which was a lot more entertaining than the first game. Love you guys.